This is the Seat Leon. Now you might know this already, but underneath its skin, it's pretty much identical to the Volkswagen Golf. In fact, you can think of the Golf as being like a Wurst. It's a German plain pork sausage, whereas the Leon is like a chorizo. It's a pork sausage, but it's been spiced up a bit with some paprika. Now, the way it's been spiced up is the exterior design. It's a little bit more sporty looking than the Golf, yet ironically, it's slightly cheaper. So the range starts at 17 and a half thousand pounds. Now, if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can configure your ideal car, get offers back from dealers and compare prices without having to haggle or from the comfort of your own home. Now, this Leon has actually recently been updated with some new lights, a different grill and some other bits and pieces. And there's some changes on the inside as well. So the most noticeable is the new infotainment screen you get with the car. Now, the entry-level model gets a five-inch screen, and you don't want that. You don't want the entry-level car because it actually doesn't have alloy wheels as standard. So you want to step up to the SE or above because then you get this eight-inch screen, and it's generally pretty nice and easy to use. You can scroll through it pretty easily. However, if you step up to the FR Tech, which this car is, then you get your full link system for connecting your mobile phone. You've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Mirror Link for those who don't have the more popular phone types. And it's pretty nice to use. Now, if you click it there, you can see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system. Other changes in the cabin include some gloss trim round here. And then, then that is it. Which is a shame, because one of the problems with the Seat Leon is the fact that the interior, while the quality is pretty nice, it's just drab, dark, and a bit miserable. Now, this FR version does have a few red bits and pieces and some sports seats, but still, it's, it's such a dreary cabin, even though it is rather easy to use. Everything's nicely laid out. Practicality is okay in here as well. So, yeah, look, big door bins, a little bit of storage down here and here, and a place for your mobile phone there. In terms of the back seats, well, the Leon, it's quite a practical car, considering it's got that exterior sporty design. So look, if I sit up straight, headroom's decent, knee room's decent. It's actually all right with three in the back at once because this middle seat is nice and wide. Not, not too high. There is a bit of a hump in the floor, but there's just about enough room for everyone's feet. I suppose my only real complaint is that the footwells, they're a little bit narrow, so you, you can't really stretch out into the seat in front, but that's really nitpicking. Yeah, it's okay for people in the back here. Let's check out the boot. So the capacity is very similar to the Golf. It's nowhere near as big as a Skoda Octavia, which obviously is also a Golf underneath its skin. But it's going to be big enough for most people. Now, look at this. There is a bit of a lip to lift stuff over. Even though you have this adjustable boot floor, which you can lower. Actually, look under there, you will see there's a space saver spare wheel if you need that. Got some storage pockets here and here. A couple of tethering points. And where is it? Where is that 12 volt socket? I always look for a 12 volt socket because you do sometimes want to plug in a hoover to hoover out your boot, but no, we don't have one in the Leon. That's where they save some money, no doubt. Now, if you need to carry longer items, you can fold these seats down. There you go. And let me just raise this back up again, which as you can see is reasonably easy to do. Then you get a pretty much flat floor there. Now, if you want to see just how much stuff you can squeeze into the Leon's boot, click up there to watch my detailed practicality video. You'll also see what it's like with three people in the back and just how easy it is to fit a child seat. Right then, that's all the sensible stuff dealt with. Time to hit the road. This Outlawn is pretty easy to drive in town. So all the controls are nice and light. The steering, for instance, and the clutch. The gear shift does have a bit of a notchy feel to it, but it's precise. And if you want an automatic, they're really good. Now, in order to make this car feel different to the Volkswagen Golf, which it shares many of its parts, say it has given it firmer suspension. And the result is that you do notice more bumps when you're driving through town. It, it's not uncomfortable, but it's just not quite as smooth. This is the FR model, and that's actually lowered, so you feel the bumps even more. Another thing I've noticed is that you seem to really sit quite low in this car. The glass is quite high up, so you feel cocooned in it. Once again, that makes it feel more sporty, but that does affect the view out somewhat. And at the back window as well, the back window is quite high. Now, if you want to see what the visibility is like for yourself, click up there to watch my 360 degree passenger ride video. As you get up to motorway speeds, the firm suspension matters less. What you do then start to notice is a bit of tyre noise and wind noise. Once again, it's not too bad, but it's just not as quiet in here as the Volkswagen Golf. Yeah, you're getting a theme here? <laughs> the Golf is a more comfortable car to travel in. 
one thing I can't fault though, because it's identical to the Golf, is the engine range. So this one has the 1.4 litre turbo petrol and it's my favourite engine. It's so good, it's really quick, it's smooth, and it'll return over 40 miles per gallon. So I'm getting, I'm getting 42. In fact, all the engines you can get with this Seat are very good. When you get out onto a twisty road, you start to notice the benefit of this Leon's sportier, stiffer suspension because it does handle very well and it's really good fun actually just hurling it down a back road. It helps that you can really feel what's going on both with the steering wheel and through your bottom in this low slung seat. It is an absolute blast. And as well as the more sporty looks, the sporty drive is one reason to have it over a Golf. Yeah, this is a good car if fun is your bag or your bolso. That's Spanish for back, by the way. Now then, it's time for the Car Wow top five things that are annoying about the Seat Leon. I really hate the way the on button for the stereo rotates, and so it points in the wrong direction. It just does my OCD in. Some of the materials you find in the cabin are nasty and cheap. I mean, this handle's horrid. Quite a few cars have a special sunglasses holder up there. This one doesn't. Well, I'm not like, supposed to use the case. The little runners for the seat belt don't actually do their job because when you do that and then pull the seat down, as you can see, that happens. This might be one of the top specification cars, but it doesn't have a rear armrest. Look, see, they're illustrating it. Thankfully, not everything about this car is bad. Here's the car wire top five cool things about the Seat Leon. You can get the Leon with a front passenger seat with a back that folds flat so you can carry really long items in the car. You can fit the parcel shelf underneath the false floor so you don't have to leave it at home when you want to cram the boot full of stuff. Top spec Leons get wireless charging for your mobile phone. All I need now is a phone which does wireless charging. In fact, if you've got an idea of which phone I should buy, let me know in the comments box below with your recommendation. You can choose between eight different colours for the interior ambient lighting and you can also alter the intensity. It does have some storage underneath the front seat, which has room for an iPad. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to see the very best deals you can get on the Seat Leon. So what's my overall verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Seat Leon. It's a really good all-round car, and it's like a Golf, just a bit more sporty looking. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click up there on the CarWow logo to subscribe to this channel. Up there to watch my detailed practicality video review of the Seat Leon, down there for the detailed infotainment video review and down there for my 360 degree passenger ride video. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was a scene from the film Leon in the car's cubby.